I am Dr. Surveen Kumar Sindhu, Director and Head of the IVF Department at Max Healthcare. Today we will speak more on IVF and learn what IVF is all about. IVF is in vitro fertilization that means the fertilization of the egg outside the body by the sperm. So how do we do this? Basically we stimulate the woman with certain injections, hormonal injections and make the eggs grow to a certain mature size after that we take out the eggs through a needle which is inserted through the vagina under general anesthesia the eggs are put in a dish and the sperm is added the fertilization takes place the next day and we look for the further development of the embryo on day 2 and day 3 subsequent to that we deposit this embryo into the uterus either on day 3 or day 5 of the embryo and then do a pregnancy test after 14 days another method of doing ivf is injecting the sperm into the egg by holding the egg by a micro pipette that is known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection and is done where the sperm is not motile and cannot fertilize on its own who is advised ivf basically those where the sperm and the egg cannot meet to form an embryo or the embryo cannot implant within the body so a woman who is not making eggs and is resistant to any other treatment a woman who doesn't have eggs and needs a donor egg again the fertilization has to be done outside a woman whose tubes are blocked because the egg cannot reach the sperm in a man if the sperm is weak that is the motility is low the count is low then again ivf is needed because fertilization cannot take place then in women whose uterus is faulty she might need a surrogate for the uterus again the fertilization needs to be done outside in cases where there is unexplained infertility that is you have tried everything and nothing is working then it is ivf because then we blame the more subtle factors of infertility which cannot be diagnosed and hence we need to fertilize outside in cases of endometriosis pcos again it is indicated where the she is not conceiving and in cases where they require fertility preservation like a patient going for cancer chemotherapy her fertility is going to go so before the therapy we take out the eggs and we fertilize and keep so that after the therapy she can become a mother ivf is also indicated in older women where they are not making eggs because they are uh, closer to menopause hence we can take a donor it is also indicated where there is absence of sperm where we can retrieve the sperm from the testes directly and inject it into the egg or in total absence we can take a sperm donor and do the ivf and a very recent indication which has come is that we make the embryo and biopsy it for genetic diseases this is indicated where parents have a genetic disease or there is a recurrent failure of pregnancy because of repeated abortions because of a genetic defect in the child then we do an embryo biopsy and this is known as pgta and pgtd the success of ivf globally is known to be around 50% but if we consider the live birth rate it's around 40% what does the success depend upon firstly the quality of the egg in older women the quality is poor success is lower the quality of the sperm if the sperm morphology is bad success rates are low and thirdly the quality of the lining of the uterus that's where the embryo is going to grow so the soil has to be good it's also dependent on how quality control the lab you're accessing is and how good is the embryologist who is handling your embryos so ivf has advanced ever since its inception We first came up with ICSI, which was long time ago. But ICSI has again evolved into various sperm selection methods, like the PICSI, MAC, then microfluidics, which can select sperms better for a ICSI procedure, which is injecting the sperm into the egg. Similarly, uh, selection of the embryo. We've got embryo scopes, which can visualize real time how the embryo is developing. how many hours it divides in and hence select the perfect embryo besides that the embryo biopsy pgd 
again is an advancement because we take out one cell from the embryo and send it for genetic testing and hence can select the best embryo. With male infertility, we have gone even further. In the absence of sperms, we open the testes under the microscope and pick out the areas which have sperms and use them for the ICSI process, hence helping males without children to become fathers. So does IVF have any adverse effects? Well, there is just one particular thing which happens that we put in three embryos and out of those three, maybe three may implant, two may implant or one may implant. So the chances of twins or triplets becomes much more. Hence, we are going forward with single embryo transfers to avoid this complication. Other than that, IVF is a safe procedure. The effect of injections lasts only 24 hours. So the woman is back to normal once the injections are stopped. However, the stress of IVF is something which each IVF specialist has to take care of because it is a huge stress for the intending couple. IVF with its advances has become a boon for couples who were unable to become parents. Mothers who never had uteruses could, can now access surrogates. Women who had lost eggs can become mothers with donor eggs. Men without sperms can access microtesa and donor sperms and hence build up families.